all these like movies I have in my head, all these like movie scenes I'm influenced by, like the music I listen to. It's like, oh, I can actually just make it. I just need a camera. And four years later, I'm coming up on 19,000 subs. If someone had a camera, they just got their camera, how would you suggest they make their first dollar with a camera? 90% of the jobs I've got are from meeting people. To start off, I always ask like, what's the background? How'd you get started? What's, what's your story? Uh, so as a kid, I've always been drawn to cameras. There's a video clip uh, on my dad's old camcorder of me like always reaching for the camera every time I notice it. Um, and I remember when I was a little older, when Jurassic Park came out, I was using that same camcorder to recreate Jurassic Park scenes in movies. Um, and my sister and her friends, this was like during the, the age of music videos and MTV. Mm -hmm. So I would always like be her camera guy and like film her friends doing like their like dance routines and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I've always really loved movies. Um, I've always been very influenced with movies like from Toy Story all the way to like, you know, the Truman Show growing okay. up. Yeah, Truman Show. Um, which I don't know how I understood that movie growing up. Yeah, it's pretty um, advanced for like a child. Yeah, childhood movie. But I would always have it on repeat. Um, like I, I, even till today, I have movies on repeat, like mm -hmm. music. Um, I just love storytelling. Um, I'd say. And when I got a little older, uh, I actually wrote my first script, and it was for a Lego Star Wars stop motion. Okay, that's sick. Um, and I like. I, I actually still have it, and I read back through it. And I'm like, this is actually decent. <laughs> it's kind of there's plot and, yeah, and yeah. stuff, but you know, being in middle school, I didn't have money or time to like really actually, make yeah. it. Um, so that was my first flop, first film, my <laughs> first flop. Um, later, I started getting back into making videos um, for YouTube in 2016. I started doing like. Markiplier, PewDiePie kind of okay. content. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I miss it. I kind of want to get back into it, but we'll see. Um, but it was around 2017 I stumbled across Casey Neistat. Okay. And I was like, you know, all these like movies I have in my head, all these like movie scenes I'm influenced by, like the music I listen to. It's like, oh, I can actually just make it. I just need a camera. Mm -hmm. um, so I got a Sony A6000. Okay. Um, started making vlogs just with like family and friends. And then in 2020, right before the pandemic, I was like, you know, this is the year I'm gonna make a public vlogging channel. Mm -hmm. um, and then COVID hit. And yeah. I was like, I could quit or before I even start or I can actually go out and just commit. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did. And four years later, I'm coming up on 19,000 subs. Oh, sick. So I've had a little bit of a journey as a creative. Yeah, definitely. No, that's awesome. So COVID you started. How were you vlogging through COVID? Were you just like doing stuff and documenting it or? Yeah, I mean, I did have a job down here actually um, in downtown for a like a nonprofit tech company. Mm -hmm. And I would do like photo video stuff. Okay, that's kind of cool. Um, but like even when that started, COVID started, uh, you couldn't take photo video of anybody anymore. So um, started doing graphic design for the company. But while I was there, I was like, I can make a few videos and stuff while I'm just showing off what I do at work. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Okay, cool. Danny, one question. Does this audio look good? Yeah. All right, cool. Just wanted to make sure. Dude, <laughs> I'm gonna say something funny. Last time when we were recording with Paulo, I look over to the camera and like it has a 30 minute limit on it yeah. when you're recording like high 4K. Yeah. So I look over and the red outline isn't on the screen. And like, I completely dissociate from the situation. Like <laughs> there's this guy talking to me about video in the, like, the cafe, Paolo's talking to me, he's looking at me and I'm just like, and I had to like walk <laughs> over to the camera and check it. And I was like, oh my God, it recorded. But just wanted, I just didn't want to relive that situation. So. <laughs> oh yeah, I know the feeling. Um, yeah, what I wanted to ask too was, did you always want to be a creative? Like when you were getting started, were you like, this is what I want to do for sure? Or did you kind of have like a back and forth of, I'm getting told to do this, but I want to be a creative. Like what kind of did that look like? So the dream of being a creative kind of was always there ever since like Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man came out. Oh my God, those movies were so And fun. I was just like, 
You could be a photographer for a living. Yeah. I'm like, I want to do that. That's so funny. <laughs> Same thing. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, my, jo- my job rap sheet and the resume is very short. Mm-hmm. It's just like, I did janitorial and I did a like moving company and then I went to doing weddings and that was like my first professional like okay. video job mm. then after weddings then it was the nonprofit, and then then I moved into actually worked for a YouTuber in the north side did you? Uh, Eric Floberg oh my god you were, I love him I love yeah. Eric Floberg yeah worked with him for a year that's sick um, learned a lot of like the document wor- documentary world and yeah just like more of the business side of YouTube. Mm. Um, and then since 20, 23 September, well, last year, so like a year now, um, been full-time YouTube. It's awesome, man. So it's just YouTube full-time? Yeah. That's so oh, well, also freelance. Also freelance, yeah. okay. But you're mainly focused on your YouTube, basically. Yeah. That's so sick. So next, that actually leads perfectly into the next question. What would you say to people that want to come up as a creative right now? Like, what's something they can do to stand out? I have mixed feelings when it comes to that question, especially these days, because there's... I don't know if you've ever seen the Jacob Pillier interview with Colin and Smear. I don't know um, if I have. It's... He opened up a, a thought pattern that I never really, like, accepted as mm-hmm. a creator. Because nine times out of ten on Instagram and YouTube, you'll hear everyone just being, like, create for your, create the videos that you want to watch. Yeah. And, like... It's very like self, like self pointed. Mm-hmm. Um, but I feel like, like if you're if you're an artist at heart and like video is like an artist's passion, self expression, like definitely delve into that. But there is this concept that I really like where once you put your art out there, it's no longer just yours. Yeah, it does belong to everyone else. Yeah, opinions and. It, and- yeah, everyone else has their own interpretation of what you make. Mm-hmm. Um, that goes from paintings to music to every p- piece of uh, artistic genre. So, as far as standing out, um, honestly, I would avoid trends. <laughs> like, <laughs> okay. learn from it, and like, if you like something, yeah, delve into it. Yeah. But, like, don't chase after things because it's popular. Mm-hmm. Because things will always change, things will fade. And if you build your reputation on a trend, you'll always be chasing that trend. Yeah. And that's just an excuse. That's just a way of definitely getting burnout. Uh, but I feel like if you're staying true to yourself and who you are and not trying to be someone else, mm-hmm. um, like n- nip in the butt the imposter syndrome in, in comparison as early as you can. Yeah. Um, and continue to pull in influences from multiple different artists. Highly recommend, highly recommend Steal Like an Artist by, what's his name? I forget his name. Look up the book. I don't remember the author. I haven't read that book, but I've heard a lot about it. Austin heard, Kleon. Is that it? Yeah. Okay. It's yeah, a good book. I've heard a ton of good stuff from that book. Yeah. I feel like, I, I mean, I really agree with that point, because especially Steal Like an Artist, like I got inspired from your video. You did interviews, you did things with Chicago, and I was like, I had this idea, like, how can I spin it to be my own thing? And yeah. then this was born. So it's like, it's super sick. It's in, it's in concept, like it does work, you know? Yeah. And then it's obviously not posted yet, so we don't know if it's <laughs> doing well, but like, it's still an idea and I don't really care if it does well. It's yeah. more for the community of Chicago. Like even if Absolutely. 300 creatives in Chicago see it, that's 300 people that are inspired to go be a creative, you know? Yeah, and honestly, like that video, I wrote like five different scripts. There you go. And like the the con like the concept behind the scripts was like the first script was I felt not enough community involved like it was too much in my opinion mm-hmm. and then I wrote the second script and it's like it's too much focus on the actual cities not the creative community yeah and then a couple of iterations later I was like I need to focus on people mm-hmm. because I mean yeah New York City has its perks LA has its own perks. Um, Chicago definitely has its perks, but not many people know about it. So it's just like, let me dive into the community here. And like, I have, now I actually have friends here yeah, yeah. <laughs> that are doing what I'm doing and like very successful at it too. Mm-hmm. So I feel like we're so hungered down and working that we don't take the time to market market ourselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, no, I like connecting with people. That's why I wanted to do this. I didn't know anybody in the city. I mean, I'm in like a corner of the city. I'm in Midway. <laughs> right? No one 
no one is doing <laughs> that over there. Like there's people, like Bucktown is pretty creative. I don't really know anyone over there, but like yeah. you walk around, you see it. This area definitely, like there's a ton of creatives. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, this is a cool way to connect with people. That's why I wanted to do it. Yeah. So out of creative starting right now, I want to ask a question to you specifically. If someone had a camera, they just got their camera, they haven't made any money yet, how would you suggest they make their first dollar with a camera? Whew. Uh, I, I wouldn't say this is for everyone, but this is how I started. Mm -hmm. I, I pulled influence from Casey Neistat, like when he would talk about how him and his brother would have any excuse to pick up a camera to just get experience. Yeah. And I'd say like as you start off, as you, as you start off, like I know you want to make money and I still want to make money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but like have the balance of are you worth being paid for? Yeah. Like build your rep. Like build your experience. Like which means sometimes you might do some jobs for free mm -hmm. or at a very low budget. Um, and just understand that that takes time yeah. to like build that experience level to where you can like sign off contracts with big budgets. Mm -hmm. um, but honestly, like when you're at that point where you can charge and you got some stuff under your belt, like keep networking with people. 90% of the jobs I've gotten are from meeting people yeah. and word of mouth. I wouldn't like only do that. I would say like try to reach out to certain people and mm -hmm. even like local, you know, restaurants that especially like one-off restaurants. You want to make a reel for them or something like that? Yeah, mom and pop shops. Yeah, yeah. like they don't have the corporate funding. So mm -hmm. if they can get some sort of like marketing going, one, you're helping your community. Yeah. And two, you're that could be a niche of yours like going off to the little, little shops and stuff. Mm -hmm. And that could be a, a nice way to, you know, build a portfolio yeah. and make some money along the way. Exactly. Yeah. And I agree with that because I work with a lot of smaller people. Like I mostly do social media myself. Yeah. So like I'll help other people with social media, like a bunch of little hitters, like a thousand a month, 1500 a month, like that type of stuff. Yeah. And with that, uh, one thing I'll add is when you're doing that work, whether it's for free or it's for those people is like focus on where you want to build towards, you know what I mean? I'm exactly. sure you can agree with that. Like if you want to do social media or you want to do macro photography or you want to do ad work, it's yeah. like when you're with them, do that work so you can build the portfolio, you know what I mean? Yeah, and like I, my big dream is like to become a director someday. Okay. And the steps I'm going about doing, the steps I'm going about getting to that point are the unseen work, mm -hmm. the unseen behind the scenes, yeah. which is like going on sets as a PA, okay. understanding the the world of being on set, yeah. the lingo to the, the gear that's used to um, what jobs do what and how they work together to make things smooth, to make the you know film or commercial or whatever you're making. Um, and I honestly feel like the best directors are ones who get their hands dirty. Yeah. Who, who know exactly what each job does, like grips, to lighting, to uh, sound uh, design and sound on set. Uh, when you know how everything works, then you can be able to direct people properly and not ask them, and not ask them things that they don't know how to do. Or just like ask them things that are outlandish that are like yeah. way too difficult to do. Mm -hmm. So that's just an example of building, building towards like what you want to be. Someday. Yeah. No, I can agree. I mean, even directing, directing like a little spec ad we did takes so much effort. So like oh, thinking yeah. about a TV show or a movie or anything along those lines, like yeah. the director of that site has to have so much past experience and so should have been in each industry and like seen what everyone has to do so he can understand how to direct that. Yeah. So. I mean, it's cool that you're working towards it. You'll definitely get there if you keep grinding <laughs> at it, for sure. It's just a lot of experience, I know that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the thing. That's, that's another piece of advice that I want to give a lot of people coming up, is this, being an artist and growing is talent, skill, a lot of patience and luck. Mm -hmm. And those two are the things that people don't want to hear yeah. And when 
things don't seem like it's moving, people might give up. Yeah. And a lot of people do give up. But there's been a lot of moments where I wanted to like give up. I'm like, I'm asking myself, like four months ago, I asked myself, do I really want to be doing this? Yeah, yeah. Should I just get a normal job and, <laughs> you know, not stress about money anymore? Yeah. But I was like, you know, if I wasn't getting paid and I had a nine to five job, I would still be making videos. Mm -hmm. It's because it's because I love it so much. Yeah. Um, it is a means of self-expression. It's a passion of mine. And I want nothing more than to, it to be literally what pays the bills. Yeah. Like I want to make the videos I want to make and be paid for it. Makes sense. You ever watch Tick, Tick, Boom? Oh my God. <laughs> I love that movie. <laughs> I, I just, literally I just asked him about Tick Tick Boom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we love that movie. I literally watched the trailer one day scrolling on Netflix. Uh -huh. I'm like trying to find a movie to watch and I scroll past it. From the first five seconds of that trailer yeah. to the end of the movie, Great movie, I was in the couch. Yeah. Just could not like walk away. Such a sick movie. It encapsulates the creative journey like perfectly oh yeah up and like i mean obviously you don't want to die in the end of it but like <laughs> yeah. you would you know it takes time it takes patience yeah. and like just make another one after one fails it's like yeah. the concept of that so and that's that's like i love the sentence the dialogue between um what was his name again which one john larson john the player, yeah. the dialogue between john and his agent mm -hmm. yeah where he was realizing you know, he put everything he had into one project. Mm -hmm. And even though everyone thought it was amazing, just in that industry, it just wouldn't work. Mm -hmm. And then he didn't make his big break until his next one. Yeah. Where he was, he simplified it, dumped it down, and just made it about his life. Mm -hmm. And that one was the thing that took him off. Yeah. So it's like, your first few videos may not be the ones to blow up. It might, it may be your hundredth, thousandth video you never know which one might take off but in the meantime you know just focus on moving from one project to the next incrementally getting better and better at an aspect of something and you know your portfolio will grow and people will see your growth and then when you do have that big break people will not only see that video but they'll go back to see your old videos yeah. and see your quality. Yeah. See what is so special about you. Mm -hmm. I love that concept. It's like you may have one go viral, but if you have the first video go viral and they can't look at anything else, yeah. they're all going to leave. But if you have the thousand video go viral, they can look at 999 more videos. Yeah, which that's is like what happened with Life of Riza. Yeah. Like she, she did like so many really good videos in the past, didn't mm -hmm. really get that many numbers. The one took off and everyone flooded exactly. her channel. Yeah. No, that's such a sick concept. So next one is for the people in Chicago. Do you think, or what do you think is gonna happen with the creative community in Chicago within the next few years? For the longest time, and it's something that I mentioned in my video about Chicago, is there has, for the longest time, there has been a speakeasy culture. Mm -hmm. You know, there is a creative community in Chicago, but it's so scattered. Yeah. There's pockets all over exactly. the city, yeah. but there's not a, like a unified community. Um, and that's that's the thing that I feel like is slightly breaking. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of creatives I've met, like you and, yeah. and other people that are starting to come up and really make some really good stuff here. And there is always going to be that pull to go to New York or other places. Mm -hmm. I recently got convinced to move to New York. <laughs> I just don't have it in my budget right now. Yeah, yeah. But I'm still going to make the best of it while I'm here mm -hmm. for the next few years. Um, but Chicago will always be home and definitely a place I'll come back to yeah. at some point. But I do feel in the future there is at least a possibility of some some form of like bigger collaborations to happen. Yeah. And I already feel like it's starting to happen on a small scale. Mm -hmm. And it's something that Chicago desperately needs, but I have a take. You have a what? 
a take. What about. is it? <laughs> In order for Chicago to, like, Chicago's creative community to grow, the entire perspective of people in the city need to view Chicago as a whole. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's a, that's like a, that's like a bigger problem. And I feel like in order for Chicago's creative city to grow, community to, to grow, there's a bigger, you know. There's things that need to happen. There's yeah. like, yeah, it's more on like a large scale. I mean, I grew up here, so the clickiness isn't even just in the creative community, it's yeah. in the whole it's city. It's everything. <laughs> it's like, especially, there's just in the city in general, it's like everybody's in their sections. I think I commented that on the video too. I was like, yeah. there's a click, like everyone's in a click. People find their click and just stay there and don't yep. move. So it's definitely like a deep rooted issue that's just within the city. But I think it takes, I mean, it really takes like 10 people to really blow up and like become famous and just yeah. not leave. And like, be like, I like Chicago, I'm in Chicago, Chicago is creative. Yeah. Like Freddie, Freddie Frang, is that his yeah. name? He's right. doing his little, he's doing like the creative social thing right now, right? Yeah. I saw that, I'd messaged him, I was like, if you want me to post about it or anything, like I'll do that, because I like the concept of building something that allows people to interact with each other, but it isn't just, like I don't have to go out and message someone and be like, hey, let's, connect, never message them again, and you don't hear from them. Yep. Like, you can actually have a social setting where you can meet those people. Yeah. Have you ever heard of the term third spaces? Uh, no. So, in the concept, we, we have normal two spaces. Mm -hmm. Our home and our work. All right. Those are the two places we usually go to. Mm -hmm. The third spaces is a thing that is slowly dying, which is like, as kids, people will go to the mall, Okay. People go to the movie theaters, um, you know, parks and all this stuff. People these days don't really go to those places for social things anymore. Mm -hmm. Especially movie theaters are slowly kind of not as exciting because people stream everything. Yeah. You know, there's... I the, still prefer to always go see a movie Oh, absolutely. Though, but I, but I yeah. agree. I agree with what you're saying. But like, you know, this... Our generation and then and the, the the next one, Z and A, like third spaces is becoming a scarcity. Mm -hmm. And I feel like in the creative space, having creative events and having like something yeah. consistent that people can go to, um, just to meet people, but also to potentially collaborate and, and like work on projects. Just like do something. Yeah, you know just what do I something. mean? Just like do something creative with other yeah. people is just, awesome. Have a space that is outside the norm mm -hmm. of just being around other people, especially yeah. ones who do what you do. Yeah. So that's why, like, I'm really trying to double down on in-person stuff. Mm -hmm. um, something that I haven't started yet, but I am almost ready to pull the trigger. Um, is like coffee shop meetups, Sick. where like a small group can meet up at random coffee shops throughout the city. Yeah. And you know, meet different people and show each other what you're working on and have a the easiest level of collaboration yeah. where it's just like what do you think of this mm -hmm. is there anything i could change what is your take on what i'm creating yeah it's like easiest way to collaborate which would be awesome i mean i would yeah i would love to see that like i see but again i'll see someone post that but it's like they never talk about it it's hidden one yeah. post on their story with like a song and a yep. time and then never hear about it again super clicky yeah feels like you're not allowed to be there like you don't <laughs> even ask so it's like Breaking that stigma would be sick. Yeah. So, like it, like it takes one video to blow up. It takes one person to actually make something. Yeah. But, like, building a community, it does take more than just one person. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, but I, I do feel like, especially after COVID, everyone wanting and yearning that personal in-person connection, there is a market for that. Mm -hmm. But, like you said, there needs to be an, ex an inclusive feeling. Mm -hmm. Because, one, Chicago has that clicky nature. Yeah. But, two, after COVID, talking to people is scary. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, there's some work that needs to happen, but I do think something in the creative community in Chicago can be really possible. I agree. So, I'll ask you one more, one yeah. more thing. What is your plans for the end of this year and the upcoming year, 2025? As far as my personal work, I just finished setting up a Patreon right. um, for some like 
exclusive things because I feel like my my YouTube community is starting to like grow but also kind of solidify in a way yeah and I want to give something of value you know something of ownership of like you're part of Shua Films or mm -hmm. something like that mm -hmm. just something cool um, and I am also opening up a discord um, sure. for free um, I mean there is a part of it that is for Patreon members but the free part is like what I was mentioning about the coffee shop it's like hey I'm going to be at this coffee shop oh, okay. this yeah, period sick. anyone who wants to come there are this many slots just so you know take over the whole coffee mm. shop um, but just like have challenges go on like create a reel on this prompt and then we'll do a, sh uh, a short film or a short a shorts film fest yeah and a person who wins gets a giveaway or something. some sort of thing yeah um, free piece of merch or something uh -huh. just trying to build community with my own YouTube channel but also doubling down with other creatives in, in Chicago, people who want to grow up, or people who want to grow in their creative artist industry in Chicago, just giving another layer of a platform. Yeah, no, that's sick. We definitely need some of that, yeah. especially in the city, so it'd be awesome to see. Yeah. Cool, well that's it. I feel like I didn't want to, <laughs> I didn't want to, I didn't want to take up a crazy amount of your time, but. Yeah, no, this has been fun. This is a good one for sure. People are definitely going to appreciate the insight you have on being a creative and also you're one of the people who actually go out of their way to do things for the city. So it's like, yeah. they'll definitely appreciate your insights to it. So it's the end of this one, guys. We'll see you. We have a few interviews this week. We have like four more. So we're going to be, we're going to be around. But see you in the next one. <laughs>